Earth is the only plant in the universe known to possess life. The planet boasts several million species of life, living in habitats ranging from the bottom of the deepest ocean to a few miles into the atmosphere. It's the only planet known to have an atmosphere containing free oxygen, oceans of water on its surface, and of course, life. Well, it sounds like we're home, right? After all, humans are living creatures. However, every day, we watch the Earth become a less ideal planet to sustain life. In this info video, we will briefly discuss these topics while answering the controversial question, are humans invasive? Do you belong here? Let us trace the real spoil of the soil. This can also cause an environmental impact by intervening in the phosphorus cycle. We transfer phosphates from certain locations to farm plants as, as fertilizers. On the farm plants where we apply phosphates as fertilizers, Plants cannot absorb all phosphates. Phosphates that are not absorbed by plants end up in water and stream towards lakes and reservoirs and cause eutrophication. Eutrophication, on the other hand, means that the water is so rich in nutrients that a certain water plants, such as water lilies and classic river, grow extensively. Additionally, when people practice wood chopping, or caimin on our tropical rainforest, phosphate supplies becomes depleted. Since most of phosphates are found in the ground under trees in such areas, when trees are burned down or chopped down, rainwater washes away phosphates and causes the ground to be unproductive. The second part of the biogeochemical cycle is the sedimentary cycle. Sedimentary cycle is a cycle which comprises the weathering of an existing rock followed by the erosion of minerals, their transport, and deposition, then burial. In the first cycle, sediments are characterized by the presence of less resistant minerals and rock fragments. If this material is reworked to a second cycle, the less resistant minerals will be eliminated or altered to a more stable product. The more sedimentary cycles that a sediment has passed through, the more mature it will become and it will be dominated by the well-rounded resistant minerals. The different stages of sedimentary cycle are weathering, erosion, transportation, deposition, and litification. Weathering is the breakdown of rocks and deposit, while erosion is the process of removal of newly formed rocks as a result of weathering. Then transportation is the transportation of sediments from one place to another, while deposition is settling and calving down the rest of the transport materials or rocks. Lastly, Litification is the process of converting loose sediments into sedimentary rocks. They take over the ecosystem. They invade the local residents. They change the food web and generally cause harm to the environment. These are invasive species. They can be found anywhere, especially on land. But organisms become invasive, not because of what they are, but where they're in. Although not all introduced species are invasive, and a good example of these are the honeybees, which are introduced in North America as early as the 1700s for their honey-making abilities. Then, for extreme examples, we have the kudzu vine, which is known as the plant that ate the Southeast America because it literally uprooted the trees and covered houses. Lastly, we have the Burmese pythons, which are able to devour a whole alligator. So invasive species cause damage to the ecosystem, to the human health, and to the economy. The introduction of an invasive species breaks the balance of an ecosystem that took ages to develop. There are factors that affect that balance, which limits the size and range of the population of said species, such as national geography, climate, food availability, and the presence of a predator. Plants consume sunlight and soil nutrients, which are consumed by the herbivores, and the herbivores are consumed by their natural predator. The natural predators 
decompose and become into soil nutrients which are consumed by the plants. The introduction of new species may affect this balance. Invasive species are not affected by the limiting factors and will continue to overpopulate and outcompete the natives for natural resources. This will cause a shift in the balance and will lead an extinction of the natives. Some invasive species are introduced to different geographic locations due to natural causes, but most of them are primarily caused by human actions, either voluntary or involuntary. But one of the biggest questions here is, with all the damage that our kind has done to the planet, are humans also considered as invasive species? We cause destruction towards the economy, the ecosystem, and the human health. We also invade foreign lands, overpopulate, and overconsume natural resources. And we also hunt down other species to the point of extinction. As we all know, humans impact the physical environment in many ways such as overpopulation, pollution, deforestation, and many more. Changes like this can trigger many negative impacts to the world we live in. In fact, here in the Philippines, with more than half of the country's land area having a slope exceeding 8%, the soil erosion problem in the Philippines is very pronounced. Heavy rainfall, inefficient use and maintenance of soil, unnecessary and efficient flooding, shifting agriculture and road building are some of the things that destroy our land, majority of which is caused by humans. If this not take action, the land that we live in will be unhealthy and therefore cause damage to animals, plants, and even humans. It may not be shown by our naked eye, but human activities can also affect the way our genes work. This is where epigenetics enters. This is a study of how DNA interacts with several smaller molecules found within cells that can activate and deactivate genes. Epigenetic changes can be regular and natural events but with several factors, such as age, environment, and disease state, that can also influence these changes. Epigenetic modifications can manifest generally as how cells differentiate to end up as skin cells, brain cells, muscle cells, and etc., or epigenetic change that can have more damaging effects that can result in diseases. For example, in an environmental perspective, the contamination of soil due to illegal dumping and industrial activities can be connected with the epigenetic changes that may put humans at risk, such as neuromuscular blockage, skin rash, and other diseases. We are spoiled of the soil, not by nature, but by choice. It's time to lend a hand and salute to our dear land. Compost, recycle, together we bond. As a youth, we make impact to change, for us to wrote in history seen in pages. Future arises for new generations to come. Let our children play without any harm.